Welcome to this uh, webinar. Uh, we're going to wait for a minute or two until other attendees join. Um, thank you for joining us. Okay, let, let's start. Um, today, we're going to talk about basically uh, machinery risk assessments, how to do one. Um, and th the idea of this short presentation is to give you a feeling what is required to perform a risk assessment and basically the, the details that you need to go into to perform these risk assessments. Uh, this presentation is from uh, Secon Safety. Uh, we have three locations. Our headquarters are in Bremen, Germany. We have offices in Augsburg, Germany, and also in Wilmington, Delaware in the US. Our services are divided into three areas, basically environmental health and safety consulting, safety training uh, that is under the academy, and basically our software called Secon Safety which is a risk assessment tool that is offered as a, a service to other companies. Our customers are spread around uh, 28 countries. We have been in business over 20 years. And we have served also some industries like chemicals, pharmaceuticals, mechanical, electrical, metal, including aluminum, automotive, energy, environmental, and others. That's me, Wilson Davidson. I've been with Secom Safety since the early this year. I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia. I've been in the industry over 30 years, uh, working in manufacturing sites uh, uh, around the US and globally as a corporate person. I'm also a certified safety professional. Let's talk about risk assessments. Basically, when we look at Risk assessment, the first thing we need to do is research for the standards. What are the standards? The standards are, there are four standards that we have in the US. The first one that we can talk about is ANSI. ANSI, there is one called B110.0. The last version is the 2020, uh, called, it's called safety of machinery. Then we have other standards might, might be applicable like the NFPA 79, which is electrical standard for 
uh, industrial machinery. Under ISO, we have the ISO 12,100 12, from the 2020. It's all, also called safety machinery. Both the ANSI standard and ISO standards will talk about risk assessments and risk reduction. They provide guidance on those. Then we got the IEC also in Europe that will talk about some about risk assessment. They mainly will ref make reference to ISO standard. Okay, let's talk about harmonization of these standards. Um, there was a, a, in, in 2012, ANSI kind of harmonized their standard uh, B11 with the ISO 12100. They were called at that point, ANSI B11.0 was called identical standard to ISO 12100 from 2010. But in 2020, ANSI published an updated version of B11.0. At that point, uh, ANSI make a small difference from the ISO 12100. And this is the difference as of today, okay? There are some responsibilities that this is the main main change uh, that are that you have to look into. When we're talking about ISO 12,100, they talk only about suppliers. They talk about basically uh, that you have to perform risk assessment at the concept design stage, at the design stage, at the build stage, and that install stage. We are talking about when we are installing, debugging uh, the equipment on uh, in users, basically in, a, so in, in the company that uh, is kind of, it's gonna use the equipment, okay? Also, when, when in, in this case, the ANSI B11.0 make it also responsible the user for reassessing the equipment. But they, they said also that besides the concept design stage, at the design of the workplace, build or integrate, install, they also want you to do assessments at, with, during the run, operate and maintain stage of the equipment, basically when you're running production on the equipment. Or if you retrofit the equipment, you're supposed to do another risk assessment. And when you're decommissioning, these are the big difference right now that we have between the ANSI and uh, basically the ISO 12100. Okay, let's talk about the risk assessment process. When we start, the first thing we need to do is determine the limits. And we'll talk about the limits and the other areas in a few minutes. Then we identify the hazards associated with the equipment. Then we do a risk estimation based on, on the risk associated with this equipment. Then we look into risk reduction, and then we determine if the machine is safe or not. If the machine is safe, basically that's the end of the risk assessment process. If it's not, then we need to add some countermeasures. And we will basically review them again, reassess them again, and then we do the calculation. At the end, we say, is the machine safe to operate? Yes or no, okay? If not, you go through the same cycle again. Okay, let's talk about the limits. What are the limits? Basically, you have a, a few different limits that you need to talk about. First, let's talk about the, uh, the use limits. When we're talking about the use limits, it's basically what is the intended use of the equipment. Also, we need to look into the foreseeable misuse of this equipment. That's basically the, the, the things that we do that the equipment is not designed to uh, as an operating machine. And if you've been working in the industry for some time, you've seen that that happens frequently. Also, we need to look at the space limits. The space limits are, for example, movement of the machinery, the space for operating the equipment, maintenance, and also cleaning. Also, you need to have the, the look into the hand machine interaction, basically that interaction between the people and the equipment. Then we look at the time limits, okay? The time limits is the lifetime of the working parts, basically how much they're gonna last. 
And we look also into other, other limits, okay? Like indoor, outdoor use or enclosed spaces. Let's talk about the identification of hazards. The definition under ISO uh, 12,100, it's the following. Only when hazards have been identified can steps be taken to eliminate them or to reduce risk. To accomplish this hazard identification is necessary to identify the operation to be performed by the machinery and the task to be performed by the person who interact with it. Taking into account the different parts, mechanisms and functions of the machine, the materials to be processed, if any, and the environment in which the machine can be used. Okay, what they're talking about here is that you need to know your machine, the equipment that you're working with. So every time you're performing a risk assessment, you need to have people that understand the equipment. Either it could be a supplier, an engineer, or somebody that have knowledge of that equipment. That's, that's the key. Even though this, the standard doesn't require a number of people to be present during risk assessment, my suggestion is you use a team approach. Basically, to have people available either, either online or over basically a call that can help you with this risk assessment. So also, the designer uh, should immediately identify the hazards, taking into account the following, the human interaction during the whole life cycle of the machine, task identification should consider all the tasks associated with every phase of the machine life cycle as given above. Task identification should take also into account, but not limited to the following category tasks. When you're saving the equipment, testing, teaching programming, process tools changeover, startup, all modes of operation, fitting the machine, removal of the product from the machine, stopping the machine, stopping the machine in the case of in case of emergency, very important, uh, recovery of the operation from jam or blockage, restart after on schedule stop, fault finding, troubleshooting. Okay, that's the interaction between the operator and the machine, cleaning and housekeeping, preventive and corrective maintenance. Some of the hazards that you will look into, and both standards, the ISO and the ANSI, will have a list of partial lists of hazards that you can find. Some are like mechanical, electrical, thermal, hazards due to noise, hazards due to vibration, radiations. Hazards, hazards due to materials and substances. We're talking about chemicals or materials used in, in the process. Hazards due to neglect or ergonomic principles in the construction of the machinery. And hazard com or combination of these hazards. This is an example of a table that you can find on the ANSI, uh, I'm sorry, ISO 12100. And the same will basically could be found on their uh, ANSI. They both have the same type of type tables. So basically, you look into this one and you talk about the origin of the hazard, then talks about the potential consequence of these hazards. And they will give you a reference on the right side of the table where you can look at the specific clause within the standard. That you can find more information on those specific hazards. Okay, let's talk about the next step risk estimation. Risk. It's related to the considered hazard. It's a function of severity of the harm that can result from the considered hazard and also the probability of occurrence of the harm. It's basically people exposed to the hazard, occurrence of the um, hazard, and also the, how likely is that an accident will happen. So when you look at a risk assessment, you look at, at these four considerations, and mainly when you're using uh, one of the systems called hazard rating number, okay? There, uh, the standard doesn't specifically ask you to follow any methodology, but this is one that we prefer to use because it covers a lot of uh, information when you're doing the risk assessment, mainly with the number of people exposed on how, how frequently the risk occurs. At your workstations, okay. 
let's talk about the risk assessment. This is key because this this one it's uh is one that it's uh, uh from my my point of view is big. This is a, a, an example that you can find under the ANSI standard, the V11 standard. Okay? And on this one, you can find that it contains basically the different blockages of information. It's very important to fill out information about the equipment that we're going to assess. Okay? The description of the risk assessment that we're performing, the date, people who participate in the assessment. Okay? the limits that we're looking at, okay? The sources of information, the standards, it could be other sources. It could be uh, safety data sheets. It could be uh, operating manuals from the suppliers, okay? It could be other information, but you need to record all that information because this is gonna become part of the documentation of your equipment. And this documentation can be used for training purposes later, okay? So on this uh, example that is provided by, by ANSI, you're talking about basically the, on the column number two, we are talking about the user or task to be performed, okay? Who's gonna perform that, that task? It's gonna be the operator of the equipment. For example, they're talking about the basically the field test, transfer line, machine number, so and so, okay? But they're talking, who's gonna perform the task? In, the, in this case, they're going to be a specific, they're going to say operator is going to remove, for example, a rejected part. And then they're going to look at the, ha what are the hazards? Well, they said on the, in this case, it's going to be mechanical, drawing in and trapping. And then they were going to do an, an initial assessment, basically the severity. And they, for this severity, and the same with the likelihood, uh, you're going to find that they will you will create basically a matrix. The user, the supplier, whoever is done, is going to create a matrix to identify what are the different parameters that we're looking at. And as a group or as a person that is conducting the risk assessment, you need to determine based on your situation or experience from other uh, similar companies, what is basically the probability of severity of that basically uh, a step. Okay. You get the rating then you said okay that's the rating without any countermeasures then you determine okay these are the countermeasures we're going to have for example in this case they're talking about interlock barriers present sending devices a storm light to pull parts or requisition submitted okay that means that they're working on that one but you need to follow up you need to update if you submit a requisition you need to make sure that when it's completed that you update your risk assessment and then you saw the risk level initially. When they put these countermeasures in place, they said, well, the, the risk now is low, okay? And at the end, you put a, basically a person responsible uh, and you set the status of that, that basically uh, a step. At the same time, I recommend that you put a due date for follow-up, okay? When you complete every item, you should basically state what was the date of completion who completed and if you for example you you bought items you can add the purchase order number all that info, important information that you can have in that document okay so that's that's in, in this like i said this is a short course on risk assessment i'm going to i'm going to basically touch base on what you should do on risk assessment but i'm not going to it's going to be difficult because it takes almost a couple of days to talk about risk assessments, how to perform. Like I said, you need people with knowledge on the equipment. This is key. You don't have people with knowledge on the equipment, it's going to be very difficult. The other thing is that what stage of the process are we are? Are we in the design stage or are we basically have the equipment in house? Have somebody performed the risk assessment on this equipment? All these questions you need to answer. Okay. And if you don't have the answer, you need to look for somebody that can help you answer those questions. Okay, part of the process after basically you, we talk basically when you're talking about countermeasures, it, it's designed into three steps. Okay, the first step is what is called the um, inherently safe design measures. Okay, 
at this stage is the only at which the hazards can be eliminated. And in some, in some places they call this hierarchy control, okay? Uh, thus avoiding the need to additional protective measures such as safeguarding, complementary protective measures. Um, some of the factors you need to consider when you're designing equipment, it's um, the first one is geometric factors, form of the machine, the visibility of the working area, accessibility, avoiding edges and corners. Others are like physical factors, you need to look at limits of actuating force, materials, and its characteristics. Okay. The second one is safeguarding and or complementary protective measures. Okay. In this case, we're looking at fixed guards, movable guards, non-separating safety devices, adjustable safety devices, uh, pressure or electrical sensitive uh, safety devices, et cetera. So we are looking at some electronics here. This is when this second space, when you cannot eliminate the hazard and you can look into basically the equipment and reduce the, the, the risk, okay? The third one is when we're talking about information for use. These are the, the less uh, protective of anything because you're gonna put warning signs, basically you're gonna perform training, you're gonna give them PPE, and you can use information from the user manuals, but it's like, like you call it, it might be verbal or visual. It's not gonna be something that impedes the person getting to the hazard zone or into the hazard itself or putting them, themselves at, at risk, okay? Um, like I said, uh, I, I want to go back a little bit and, and see if you have any questions so far uh, regarding what is a risk assessment, what it takes to do a risk assessment so I can uh, start asking, uh, answering questions. But like I said, this is a process that it's, uh, it's, it takes practice. Um, like I said, the best way to do that is to read the standards and practice do one after the other. And in, in Seacon, we have this tool called Seacon Safety. It's a software that you can use for performing and documenting these ones, these uh, risk assessments. Like, like I said, key of risk assessment is to document properly and communicate that co doc documentation to others, have them available for others to see. For example, uh, when you conduct this risk assessment, that should be used as part of the training of the equipment. And people might ask you, what are the hazards and what are the risks associated with this equipment? What are the countermeasures? And the risk assessment, if you document it properly, will give you that information to perform the risk assessments. I would like, like I said, in the next few minutes to answer any questions you might have regarding risk assessments. Any questions so far? I have uh, basically about seven attendees right now, and I would like to, I probably do have a question about risk assessment, what it, what it takes to do a risk assessment, uh, how long it takes to risk, perform a risk assessment, and all depends on the complexity of the equipment, how many pieces of equipment we're talking about, uh, what you define as the risk assessment, the limits. Something important that we talked about before during the risk assessment, is when you're designing the equipment, make sure you look into what is the use of this equipment? What is the type of maintenance cleaning that you're performing? I've seen examples of when they design equipment, the lines were so close that you cannot even open the electrical panels. And that was designed, nobody looked into that when they were doing the risk assessment. So uh, I think there is more than just basically a piece of paper or an exercise. Uh, when we look at the engineers or whoever designs the equipment and the, also the workplace, we're going to install the equipment. We need to look about the adjacent equipment that we're going to be installing this piece of equipment with because you need to provide space. And then we talk a little bit about that in, in the last couple of minutes. So that's part of, of your risk assessment. If I go back a little bit on, on, on the screen and we look at 
the sample risk assessment, do you have any questions? Uh, I got a question now coming. And risk assessment should be done before or after purchasing a machine or both? I would say both. Uh, when If I go back to my, my screen, let me let me go back a little bit, a few slides. When you look here at the responsibilities, when we perform a risk assessment, it needs to be performed on any of these stages. All these stages. For example, when you're trying to define what equipment we're going to design, the, is the concept, we, we need to do a preliminary, preliminary risk assessment. Then when we design the equipment, we got the equipment in a in a drawing, in a piece of paper, we said, okay, what are the risks associated with this equipment that we're uh, building or designing. And then when you build the equipment, you need to perform another risk assessment. And you do, your final one, normally from the supplier side, is when you're installing, debugging this equipment. Do we have the right interlocks? Do we have the protective fences? Do we have the, the, the right uh, gates? Are the gates open from the in, uh, outside only? Or you, can you open it from the east side to escape in case of emergency? All that you need to take in consideration. And for example, when you're installing, you look at the control panel. Is a control panel outside the equipment or inside the cage area? The same with the user side. When you basically, you look at the concept design, you should be working with the supplier because you're gonna buy the equipment and you said, okay, uh, is the equipment something that you sell frequently to other customers or you're gonna custom design to for me, okay? You look also at your workplace. You are the user, you're, you know about your location. You know what space you have uh, available, or you have to extend, uh, basically do an extension of your buildings to place this uh, piece of equipment. Like we said, when we're looking at space, it's basically look at all the phases of when you operate the equipment. It's the normal operation, cleaning, maintenance, okay, and inspections. Um, then when you build equipment, integrate the equipment in-house with the other pieces of equipment also, we, we look at the installation, and when you're running, operating, and maintained, you basically continuously need to assess the risk. For example, if an equipment being running for a year or two, you need to re go back and revisit this risk assessment to make sure that they're up to date. If you have made retrofits to the equipment, you need to conduct a risk assessment, also when you're decommissioning, and that's key. If you don't do it when there's commissioning, you might have an accident, something that you haven't seen. You left some chemicals inside the equipment when you're removing the equipment that might uh, cause an injury or harm to somebody. Hopefully I, I answer your question. Any other questions right now? I have another question. How often uh, do we need to revisit and verify the risk assessment? And it is necessary when we develop a machine change only. No, <clears throat> and I would, it's depending, it all depends on your or your company policy. Some companies require that you uh, uh, review your, you got a management system for, for uh, safety, for example. Some companies require that you update those risk assessments or review them at least once every three years to make sure that they're up to date. But at the same time, if you have a, a change or a retrofit on the equipment, or basically a, not only retrofit, you replace the equipment completely, you need to perform a risk assessment too. So it all depends on your company policy, but every time you have um, a, a change in the equipment or if your management system calls for uh, risk assessments to be reviewed every three years, you might not need to basically redo the whole risk assessment. You'll review that information is correct. That's what is required from your management system. Yes, you have to do it. Let's see if we have any other questions. Kevin, do we have any other questions? Did I answer all of them? Any any other questions from the audience?
Okay, let me, uh, I got another question here. It is required to have a certification to develop a risk assessment. Let me see, it's gonna be this one. It's required to have a certification to develop risk assessment in our plant, or it could, or it could be internal trained personnel. Um, all depends, depending on the, lo the location. There's some, uh, in, in Europe, for example, the equipment manufacturer needs to certify, get a certification from the supplier. Uh, if the supplier got, have people trained to certify the equipment and provide that certification that is built according to the standard, yes, they can be done internally. But that's for the supplier to, to give you that certification. But for example, in other countries where you don't have that uh, certification requirement, what you can do when you uh, basically uh, add a, put your uh, request for for a proposal, you ask them that they need to follow and provide that certification to you that the equipment is designed to according to whatever standard you decide they should follow. For example, in some countries they might say, okay, you need to follow NCB 11 uh, or uh, NFPA 79, other standards, but you need to write down that information for the supplier to know that they have to build that equipment and they have to provide you that certification at the end of the process okay uh, to to certify the equipment and yes you can put it that in paper but if at the end of pro the process this, the user don't require that doesn't look at that piece of paper or doesn't require it from the uh, the supplier the supplier might say well we, we didn't provide it and they overlook that one it's the user responsibility to make sure that they provide that, piece, that certification, okay? But yes, you can have internal trained personnel, uh, but normally that's the supplier. In Europe, for example, that's the supplier's responsibility. But in our case, in, a, in at the user side, we need to make sure that that documentation is provided with the equipment when the equipment arrives or at the end, with, after, after they install it at the site make sure that they provide that certification before we start operating the equipment. Let me see, any other questions? Okay, any other questions? I don't see any other questions. Um, like I said, this is a, just a brief uh, presentation on machinery risk assessment, how to. Uh, if you have any questions at any point, please feel, feel free to contact uh, us. Um, with this, We're gonna post this presentation. Also, um, this uh, information will be provided to you. This is my contact information. You can write me or call me anytime. Uh, I will be glad to speak to you about risk assessment and other services that we provide. Also, you can go to seconsafety.com or seconsafety.de, uh, which are our websites, and look at the academy where we have more courses. And we also, you look at uh, safety consulting. Also, you can request to have uh, basically a demo of the soft Secon safety software. If uh, we don't have any more questions, thank you for attending and uh, have a great day today.